Hello and welcome back to Oso oh Retro and to the first video for my new retro computer room. It still needs a bit of work and some more decoration but for now it gives me a dedicated place where I can film future YouTube videos as well as doing most of the repairs and restoration projects I have planned for this year. So keep an eye out for those videos in the future. It's a great reason to subscribe by the way. <clears throat> I would also like to quickly apologize for the lack of content over the holiday season. I was away on holiday for two weeks and my house was broken into whilst I was away and unfortunately amongst the many things they stole was the camera that I used to make my videos. So I've been running around trying to repair the damage and replace the stuff they stole. So I'm now forced to use a much smaller and cheaper camera for the filming of this video. Um, so hopefully the quality is still good enough. But anyway, enough of that, let's jump right into today's video. So one of the fun things about the retro computing hobby is getting to play with, and often struggle with, old technology which many of us used when we were younger. And one such technology was modems. These days we take the internet for granted and we just kind of assume we can go online and look at the latest news and weather or chat to a friend halfway around the world in real time. But 30 years ago that wasn't the case at all. The internet as we know didn't exist. Instead, all we had was something called Computer Bulletin Board Services, or CBBS which was quickly shortened to just BBS. As the name implies, these were computerized versions of old-fashioned bulletin boards often found in workplaces and homes throughout the world, which allowed people to leave messages for others to read at a later time. Like their physical counterparts, online or computerized BBSs allowed users to do a similar thing by logging in and posting messages or reading existing messages left by others, or even sending a direct message to a specific person. This was often termed net mail and was in many ways a precursor to what we now know as email. BBSs became wildly popular in the 80s and early 90s with around 60,000 of them being active in the early 1990s, with some catering to very specific subjects like guns or legal issues, while others were more broad and general, providing a space where people from entire states or geographical areas could meet and chat about pretty much anything. BBSs also offered something that was pretty much impossible to find elsewhere at the time, a place where users could exchange files and chat in real time with each other. These were great places to chat your friends or download the latest games in the comfort of your own living room. You could even play games on BBSs with many great text and text art based games being available to play through the BBS client. Some were even multiplayer like Lord 2 as seen here, so you could log on and play an adventure game with your friends. Amazing. Naturally back in the day the only way to access any of these BBSs though was by dialing in with your modem. This made modems pretty much indispensable for getting online throughout much of the 80s and 90s. And even when the internet did finally arrive in the early to mid 1990s, modems were still the preferred method of getting online for most of the world's population. So as much as some of us may love to hate them, modems are intrinsically woven into the fabric of those early internet days. And merely hearing those familiar modem sounds when establishing a connection is enough to bring on a flood of nostalgia. But all good things must come to an end, and the advent of the internet and web browsers in the mid-1990s pretty much killed off the BBS as people no longer needed them to get the latest files or to chat with their mates. Still, not all went the way of the dinosaurs, and even today there are quite a few BBSs still around for us to visit, kept online mostly by enthusiasts and hobbyists for old times sake, or in areas of the world where the internet is still pretty uncommon and people need an easy way to communicate with each other, BBSs still survive. So what do you do if you are a retro computer enthusiast and you want to relive the experience of BBSing? Well, the quickest and easiest would be to use a modern client like Singterm on your modern PC and just connect through that. And while this is all fine and works pretty well, on this channel we like to use real vintage hardware as much as possible so we can get a real feel for what the experience was really like. So I'm going to be doing this on my lovely PCS386DX40 here. And if you have a retro PC lying around, the slower the better really for BBS, I highly recommend that you use that rather than a modern PC. But doing that brings us onto another problem. How do we connect? The few BBSs that are around today have pretty much all moved online, so they no longer require or even accept a dial-up connection. So even though old modems are still pretty commonplace, 
using them to dial into the BBS is not really practical anymore. Combined with this is the fact that the once ubiquitous phone line has been largely replaced by the cell phone and that most ISPs don't even have a dial-up service and it all starts to look a little bit hopeless. But we retro PC enthusiasts will not be that easily defeated and so that's where this comes in. This, as the name on the box suggests, is a Wi-Fi modem and basically this is a really cool retro looking modem emulator which has been built using modern components and which allows us to get around the pesky technicalities of the modern world which would otherwise prevent us from using an actual modem. It works by using a low cost Wi-Fi microcontroller running custom firmware created by Bo Zimmerman which allows the microcontroller to simulate an old Haynes compatible modem. It then connects to your modern internet connection through Wi-Fi eliminating the need for a phone line entirely. To your computer, the emulator appears as a normal modem, thus allowing you to use off-the-shelf terminal software to communicate with it. This particular one was built by a member of the South African Vintage Computer and Console Group here in South Africa by the name of Murray Parkinson, and Murray has very kindly agreed to lend me this one to do a review of. But before we get to that, let's do a bit of a quick unboxing here so I can show you what it looks like. So the first thing we have in the box is the serial cable for the modem. It's got one port on this side for the modem itself and then a split cable on the other side which is really handy as it allows you to plug this into whichever COM port on the back of your PC you have free. So if you already have a serial mouse on COM1 for example you can use the big plug here to plug into COM2 instead which is really neat. Next we have the modem itself or modem emulator I should say. And this is by far and away the best thing about this emulator. It uses an original modem housing so that it looks pretty much exactly the same as an old school original modem. Not only that, but as we will see, Murray has wired up all the lights on the front of the modem to the emulator inside so they flash and illuminate just like the real thing. And I think this is just such a nice little touch. This emulator is totally in keeping with the whole retro PC aesthetic and looks exactly like a real modem sitting on top of your PC flashing away. There are one or two little things that spoil the illusion slightly which we'll look into a bit later but on the whole I think this is a really well done little device. And finally we get this really nice little retro style printout with the instructions that was printed on an old dot matrix printer by the look of it and on this old reel to reel printer paper. Again, this is just a really nice little finishing touch which gives this emulator that proper retro feel. And that's why I prefer this particular emulator over something like the Wi-Fi 232. I mean, yes, they both technically do the same thing and they both actually work in pretty much the same way, but with this one at least just looks the part. It comes in the original modem casing and it just looks like an original modem which fits your retro computer perfectly. That's not to take away from the Wi-Fi 232 at all, it's just that this one has all those little extra finishing touches that to me make a big difference. Looking closer at the back of the modem and we can start to see now how this has been done. The internals of the original modem have been removed and replaced with a modern microcontroller. In this case, the ESP8266 Node MCU. And as you can see, the new ports line up pretty well with where the old ports on the modem were. But let's open this up now and have a look at what's inside. First, we have to remove these little rubber feet on the bottom of the case so we can get to the screws. Then we simply unscrew the two screws on the bottom. And that's it, now we can open it up and have a look inside. And now we can see that it is really quite straightforward. There's the ESP8266 microcontroller on the left hand side of the screen here, along with this little serial module board on the right, which provides a serial connection between the computer and the microcontroller. The existing LEDs from the old modem have then been connected up to the microcontroller with some resistors and hot glue to keep them in place. Pretty simple, but very cool nonetheless. So let's put this all back together now and get it installed on the 386. So setting up the Wi-Fi modem emulator is actually pretty simple. The first thing to do is connect the power cable from your cell phone charger into the back of the modem and then plug the modem charger into the wall socket. Next we plug the one end of the included serial cable into the back of the modem. 
and the other end into the back of the PC. In this case, I am using COM2 because I already have a serial mouse on COM1. With the PC now booted into DOS, we need to install some software to control the modem. The instructions recommend BananaCom, so that's what I'm going for here. But there are others like Kermit that will probably work just as well. The software isn't included, but it's a simple matter of downloading the BananaCom installer to a floppy disk and running the install program on the retro PC. With the software installed, we can now run BananaCom and simply follow the printed instructions to set the board rate and connect to your favorite BBS. And that's all there really is to it. It seems to work really well and the little LEDs on the front flashing away as you transfer data between yourself and the BBS is pure nostalgic gold. The only thing I can complain about with the lights is that you can see the blue light of the microcontroller shining through the casing when it's on and this becomes very noticeable at night or in a dark room. It does kind of spoil the illusion a bit but I'm sure it can easily be remedied by either putting some tape over the LED on the microcontroller or disconnecting it somehow or just maybe using a less transparent modem case. Another slightly unfortunate thing that I think is common with all of these modem emulators is that they don't seem to be able to play DOS games under either the modem or serial option. Many DOS games like Doom, Duke Nukem 3D and Descent etc have the option to play multiplayer over modem or serial cable. And despite a friend and I experimenting quite extensively with all kinds of settings in BananaCom, we weren't able to get the game to work successfully, even over a serial connection. Having said that though, we came pretty close at one stage and were able to connect and get into the game before it crashed with errors complaining about parity on the game packets. So it might still be possible to get it working, but it certainly isn't something that works out of the box. So what do I think of the modem emulator? Well, I really like it actually. It makes it very easy to explore the world of BBSs on your retro PC, which you probably wouldn't be able to do anymore with a real modem and a phone line. And the best thing about it for me is that it looks perfectly at home on top of the computer and the flashing LEDs on the front just complete the experience. I do wish it could also be used to play retro games with friends over serial or modem connections, but even without that ability, it's still a really cool little piece of modern retro tech that I have really enjoyed playing with over the last few weeks. And now for some good news. If you're in South Africa and you would like one of these modems, Murray can build one for you, with the price being around 400 Rand excluding shipping. So if that sounds like something that you would like to try, then by all means contact Murray using the details in the description below and hopefully he can sort you out with one of these awesome retro modern Wi-Fi modem emulators. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? And with that, I'm afraid I must get back to my BBSing and to my game of Lords 2. And so I'm going to end the video here. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, let me know about your experiences with BBS in the comments below. And if you like this video or if you liked something in this video, then feel free to leave a like. But um, until next time, cheers guys.